So today we're going to start the install of the Sport Dog Invisible Fence. So we bought it, I think it's a thousand feet. We bought the additional 500 feet. And we're going to kind of make a, we brought an additional call or two for our second dog, Browning and Winchester. We're going to run this across the front of the house, um, try and keep the dogs away from the highway. I mean, they're fairly well trained, but dogs do chase birds and they do run out onto the highway. So we're gonna kind of double loop it across the front into the forest and into the forest on the other side. And then from there, uh, hopefully we can just let the dogs off leash and not really worry about them running out onto the highway. Right, Browning? You wanna run out on the highway? Good boy. So we'll see how that goes. We'll uh, take you along for the ride. And uh, let's see how it goes. So we're outside here now. We'll do a little bit of a unboxing of the sport dog. So everything is unboxed here. We've got the receiver and the collar. Looks like a thousand feet of wire, 500 each. We've got the hundred flags or whatever they say. Power. Looks like some electrical stuff, some marettes or something like that. Battery. Collar stuff. Instruction manual. Really don't need the instructions till I actually run the wire, I guess. Let's get started. Well, we've got the wires installed here now. Loosely, we'll fix it up in a bit. You can see over here, the loop is correct. It's got the little loop light on, so it's working. And what you'll see is we ran about, I don't know, 1,200 feet of line across the front of the yard here. See it demarked by the oh, wheezy Winnie. See it demarked by the flags there. Kind of a warning. I can tell you it already works. Don't get too close on them there, eh? We've got it on Browning right now. We don't have it on Winnie. But uh, we kind of have it doing a horseshoe around the, the front of a property here. The double loop all the way around through the bush. So at least we don't have to worry about our dog getting hit by a car there now. Right here, I just pickaxed it. Both loops there, you're supposed to keep it three to five feet away. I think we're probably about eight feet away everywhere. But uh, pickaxe through the driveway there, we'll bury it through the driveway, and then the rest of the grass will be pretty easy. We'll do with a little uh, sod shovel. Ready to go, Sammy? So as you can see here, I've buried the wires. Right here is where you start twisting them together so that way the dogs can pass without getting shocked. I buried it under the driveway. Then I've got to slowly make my way up along towards the underside of the deck. Cut her through the garden right there, go under the deck, and my power source is right up there on the deck, the porch. So I've got a lot of work to do. A thousand feet of, I wouldn't say digging, but slotting the the soil to stick the the line in so see you in a bit so we're keeping plugging away at our burying the line here now Samantha kind of put all these flags out as a warning for the dogs even though we actually don't have the line running there we actually have it running in the forest back there but uh, it does work he's got the collar on right now hey boy good boy he won't get too close to that. It'll actually give him a little shock, and over time, I think he'll get used to uh... Winnie. Hey, boy. Over time, I think he'll get used to uh... staying away from the road. Good boy. Winchester's a little too small for it yet. Browning, you mean good? Sit. Good boy. Hey, eh? good boy. Yeah. Big cutie. Oh, Winnie, you want a little love too, eh? You want a little love too. Hey, 
Hey, buddy. Keep working away down here. I'll keep digging the ditch. Oh. So I'm burying the line here now. I had gone and bought this little, I don't know what you call it, a fat sod shovel or something like that. It worked pretty good. But honestly, I got this little ditch. Winchester! And that's why we need to get a collar on him. Got this little uh, ditching shovel. This is actually the perfect thing for burying the line. Step, twist, twist, done. Step, twist, twist, done. Sammy will come over and bury this later on. It'll be good. But this uh, this cuts in way better than the shovel does. So if you're gonna bury your line, I would suggest getting one of these styles. They they're so easy to dig in. Really cheap, probably cheaper than a shovel and really makes it work well. Yeah. See the dogs and Sammy are working hard out here. Browning enjoying a ride in the rhino. Sammy enjoying a roll in the hay. Hey, not get much work done, eh? Hey buds, not get much work done. You can see the collar on Browning here, there, the sport dog tech. He's learned it now, he already knows to watch the flag, so it's pretty good. Hey buddy, he loves riding in the rhino. Good job, good boy. Hey, we're just trying to keep you safe. Just trying to keep you safe, big guy. Okay, well it's been a year here since I installed the Sport Dog electric fence. And uh, Winchester here, he's gotten a little bit bigger. But uh, what you'll notice is I don't even have the dog collar on him anymore. The boys have learned so much about where it is that they essentially don't cross the line anymore. You can kind of see right here in the gravel where I'd gone through, right there and right there where I did my double loop, kind of went around this tree here, across here. And what happens is the boys no longer really run to the front of the yard and I still have the collar. Browning's up there sitting on the porch right now because he knows not to get too close because it zaps him pretty good. But yeah, in general, I would say the electric fence has been a success. They have learned not to run across it. The dog collars do die. I had uh, two of them now that have died, so I'm on my, my third one. Now, I don't know if that's just because these dogs do a little more wear and tear with them and they really do like to run and smash and jump in the pool. But, you can see Browning here. He's being all good, he's got the collar on. He was the one that was starting to get a little more bold as we took the collars off. And he was starting to follow me down to the front of the driveway and kind of getting close and getting close to the road again. So, that's why I bought the new collar. And you'll notice he, he's pretty he's pretty wary when he's got the collar on to not come to the front. He doesn't want to get zapped. Good boy. But uh, Winchester, he's smart enough too not to not to get too close to the to the bottom. But in general, I would say the Sport Dog electric fence has been a a pretty good investment. It's kept our boys safe. And uh, still working, hidden here, behind. But yeah, it's worth an investment. Just remember that the collars will break and die on you. But the dogs do learn pretty quickly that it does zap them.